walking out there, Debbie, weren't we? It we sounds like a were. it sounds like a razor light song. That's what it reminds me of. I love it. I absolutely love it. We've really got ourselves in the zone to do some fabulous crafting. Yes, we are, of course, talking about craft class. Imagine it's like, right, in my head, it's kind of like creative cravings meets a masterclass. It's all about going back to basics, uh, welcoming so many of our new viewers. We have so many new viewers at the moment. If you are a newbie, uh, and you, maybe you've joined us a few times, but you're fairly new to see at Crafts TV, I'd love you to comment uh, and let me know. Just give me a wave. Tell me where you are watching us from. But if you are new to us here at Crafters TV, or you're new to crafting in general, then you are in the right place at the right time, because the craft class is all about us basically giving you a two-hour virtual lesson on a whole host of different things. What we're really looking at today is paper craft. That's what we're looking at. So we're looking at paper, how we fold paper, and how we stick paper together. Now, that sounds a lot less exciting than this class is actually going to be. Now, I am not on my own. Of course, I have got uh, my fabulous friend, on-air wife and fabulous teacher, Debbie Fishy, with me. How are you? Oh, I'm really great, Joe, and I'm super excited about this. I do love a craft class because if I was that crafter uh, on the other side, I'd be the one really wanting to learn about all these things. I mean, we're not splitting any hairs here, Joe. We're going to go straight in with glue school, with scoring, with what we can do with all these boards and honestly they will just make your life so more simple and you'll be able to just catch everything at a good pace and re-watch it back so it's going to be a fab show joe yeah it really really is and it's a great one for you to get involved with as well lots of things on this show the score master the ultimate pro the embossing boards the envelope box the enveloper uh, there's loads of things on this show that you loads of you may have already and love using i'd love for you to share pictures with me in this show if you want to share those pictures you can do so by emailing me studio at crafters companion .co.uk. Uh, I'd love to have a little natter with you on this Super Sunday as well. Uh, Karen's in from Rhode Island. Diana from Indianapolis. I can see Erin's in from Oklahoma. Maureen in Cheshire. Mary from Ireland as well. Joyce is in from Florida. If you want to have a bit of a chat with me, share some salacious gossip, you can do so by finding me on Crafters TV on Facebook. Drop into the live feed there. Or uh, if you are over on YouTube, then you can find us uh, by searching for Crafters Companion. It's very, very easy and simple. Let's get right into this uh, first item that we're going to be looking. Uh, we're going to be looking at today. It's the Crafters Companion st Scoring Starter Kit that we are looking at here. What you're getting included in here is well, it's like our ultimates really. You're getting the boxer board in here. You're going to get the Score Master board in there as well. You're getting some Centura Pearl to get you started. You've got a tape pen, which is fantastic. You've also got the Teddy Surprises board and the Envelobox Creator scoreboard as well. It's a brilliant deal for you all. Everyone's got a great saving, as you can see, £44 or $46, saving you uh, just under £19, just over $20. So really, really awesome uh, value for money right there with that one. Now, we've also got some awesome adhesives for you on the show. We're going to be doing a glue school a little later. And this is the ultimate starter kit for you. And look at the saving. You've got 30% off here, which is brilliant. So you've got the Colau uh, 3D glue gel, which is this one. It's absolutely awesome for sticking a whole host of different things. You've got your tacky glue down here. It gives you that instant fix. You've got your all purpose. Both the tape pens, you've got the red liner and you've got the craft foam pads in there as well. If you don't have any adhesives and you want something that's going to cover a whole host of different uh, bases for you, then that is definitely it. Now, uh, I will give you a heads up of some of the, un well, I say unusual, uncommon. We don't have them in the show. Uh, we're going to uh, be getting more in depth with these with Debbie as we go through the show. Styroco is the first one. I have no idea what that does, but I'm looking forward to finding out. We've also got the Verniskull glue as well. Uh, these brilliant prices here on these. We then have the Strass glue for you. Uh, this one's super, super strong, I'm told. We also have the book binding glue as well. This is £5.39. You've got the photo glue, um, which is this one here, £2.30. It's great pricing on these, by the way. Uh, we've also got the 3D kit, which is this one here. It's an 80ml silicon glue. So a lot like our chunky glue, that one, I think. But uh, I'm looking forward to I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the glue school. I'm excited to uh, get your questions as well, because I would love for you to get all any questions in that you've got about the score master, the ultimate, how you can create different things, how to stick things down. Your crafty conundrums, we've got you covered, haven't we, Debbie, in this show? Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah, anything. Anything you want to ask, anything you want to learn, uh, it's all going to be good. But we are going to go right to basics to see exactly how things work and what you can do. So the first thing I'm going to be using is my good old favourite. This is the thing I take everywhere with me. I'm never without my master score. It is one of those things you cannot do without. It's lightweight, it's portable. Uh, the actual, I haven't got mine in there, but you've actually got a place where you keep your uh, poke tool. So not your poke, I always call them poke tools, a scoring tool. So your scoring tool keeps nice and safe in there and looks amazing. So it's beautiful, it's purple. You'll see that you've got inches on one side and then you've got centimeters on the other. So whatever you're comfortable in using, you've got a side for each. Now on the board, you can see on mine, this one, well, it's our studio one. You can see that there's lines that people have drawn in there. They're just lines that you can put in yourself and we'll show as we go along what will make things life easier for you. So first of all, we're going to take our scoring tool. The great thing, what this does is straight away, it's going to be able to create all your card blanks. So just scoring a piece in half. Now, I always score mine twice. I like to do just a, a thin lay and then put that down. I'm using Centura Pearl. It's it is absolutely beautiful, but what it means is you get that beautiful score line, you get no crimpled edges, you get a precision of your card. And I've made a card blank straight away, just with one score, being able to use that scoreboard. But the scoreboard is so much more, and you're gonna be able to do so much, so much more with it. So the main thing about a scoreboard and what we've done for you is we've created a boxer board for you. So even though you get a boxer board with this, you can use these in in the same way. So it means that if we are just scoring, so I'm gonna cut my pages down because I think we'll make a smaller box uh, than what the, the card is. Now it doesn't matter what you want it to hold, you cut it to the size that you, so let me just trim this so I know that I've got a smaller board. You want two pieces of cardstock straight away exactly the same size it doesn't matter what the size i can use this size i can use this size but you want it so it will fit something so let's just say for instance um uh, let me try and find something i've got my tape pen at hand we want to fit our tape pen you want to score those lines around that so what i'm going to do is i know that if i come in sort of two inches an inch and a half each side so let's do an inch and a half and first of all i am measuring I'm counting on this side. I'm going to do my inch and a half on one side. So you always work to the same side then, do you, Debbie? Uh, well, no, Joe. So I'm doing my first piece of card on this side of the board. And then what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using the same measurement on every single side. So I know I'm coming down onto here. So I know I've got this piece in the middle. So that's my first part done. Now, if I bring my board to the bottom here, if you, and it's got an arrow pointing to this side of the board, this says that it's my box lid. Okay. And then if we come to the other side, it says box base, which means you need to go to this side to do your box base. So take in that identical piece of card, you go to the opposite side of your uh, board, and we're gonna do the same job. So it's one and a half inches, but we are scoring from the right hand side. So I'm then just gonna go to the one and a half inches and we're gonna go to that side as well. And you're gonna do that again all the way round. What this actually does, oh, just slipped them. Uh, what this actually does is it gives you the same uh, space, but on this side of the board, there is, there is a bigger section here to what there is on the opposite side here. So it's slightly, very slightly smaller uh, to create your box base to your box lid so it will fit. Now I know you're, you, so you're using single sided cardstock there. Yep. Would you always score on the coloured side, Debbie, when you're using um, um, your it, coated you know, cards? Do you know what, Joe? when I first started scoring uh, with with any cardstock, I used to score on both sides. Okay. Because what that does, when you are scoring, what you're actually doing, you are, uh, you're making a dent into, you're stretching the fibres of the card. So as you stretch the fibres, when you score down, you want to fold against that. So, okay, so you yeah. always fold away from so your you pretty side. you fold away from it, yes. But some things, like if you're doing a score that you need to go up, down, up, down, 
you, it's then sometimes best just to do those scoring lines on both sides and that way you stretch the fibres and you'll have no trouble in bending them at all. Awesome, thank you now, for that. Now I'm going to bring in my scissors. Now all I like to do, people do it differently but this is how I do mine, I like to snip up to that centre point, I like to cut out my triangle and cut away a little bit at the edge. The reason I do that is because when you bring it round it gives you a bit more wiggle room so and it also if I bring that in there can you see how it looks, I mean it looks just really professionally yeah. finished off and that's what I like about that so it's because it's in white I'm afraid but it's a really, it's a good way of just doing it and I like to rotate and turn each one where some people like to do each end but I'm going to do on each corner so we're just snipping out that triangle and snipping off the end and it just makes it really neat and it means that if your box is slightly out that won't be because of the board you might find you've got that that ledge, you can see yeah. that really clearly there, you might have a little ledge, that gives you enough wiggle room to push that down. I mean, I know mine is absolutely perfect, but that's because my card is the perfect size. Okay. So that's our first one. We're then gonna go into our second one and snip that down. So again, taking off those corners, you're just gonna rotate round, keep snipping away until all your corners are gone. So obviously I'm speeding up just to, um, to get this demo done, but you will take your time and get those all perfected. And then we're gonna, then what I'm gonna use in, so a little bit of a glue score at the moment, I'm bringing in my uh, solid line tape and we will talk more about those. Although I'm pretty sure most of our savvy crafters know all about our tape. So we're gonna bring that in, putting that on all our edges. And then I'm gonna do the same on this one. So all of them are done and then we can stick them all together. So putting that tape, each tab is turning all the way around until we've secured our tape in place. And then it's really simple because all these edges will marry up precisely to the end. So you get that complete end, which is, it just looks incredible there. So, and that's what you want. That's the professional uh, um, end that you want to, uh, for using your boxes. Turning it round. Again, just creating there. And the last one, just putting that so our ends meet absolutely perfect. And then I'm going to do the same using either the lid or the base. I've, I've, lost, um, I've lost track of which one is which, Joe, but I know that they one will fit into the other. A lot of people are loving this today. Laura says, hello everyone, I was looking forward to this today. Uh, Lynette says, afternoon, afternoon, Debbie and Joe, really looking forward to the show. Moy says, I've been crafting for over 30 years, but there is always something new to learn. I think that's a great point, even if you are a really experienced seasons crafter, you're going to pick up hints and tips in the show as well. Uh, and Susan saying, good morning all, thanks Debbie for the fantastic craft along yesterday. My mum loved the card, so thanks for that. Oh, that's so good. So look at that, Joe. I mean, you could not get a more perfect fit. It comes on and off. You've got that perfect box uh, every single time. So that is the thing that the boxer, the uh, score master is going to do to you. Uh, do for you, sorry, not do to you. But you're also going to be able to do certain things like, let's say we want to create a different style of box. So uh, I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to cut this in half, Joe, just so it makes it a bit of a smaller box because this one is one of my favourites to do. It is one of those boxes that just comes together really quickly. So I'm going to just cut my A4 card in half and then we're going to pop that on here and I'm going to just let me... Uh, that's eight, so that's four, one before the four there. So I'm just gonna score it in half. And then what I'm gonna do, I need to find my center point. So I'm gonna pop that between my two layers here, and I'm going to just find my center point, which is the four. And I'm also going to come down from that four to the bottom and just do another tag. Now using that one, I'm going to turn this round. Oh, let me just find my central point. I'm going to take that central point here to that number four and just score up. We're going to do the same again on the opposite side. So just coming down from this side 
and then we want to go up to that four again to create that triangle in the center and then we're going to do the same on this side so just get in my center point there go into that point where we put that notch and then scoring up and then lisa again. batgirl says forget bridgerton or emily in paris crafter tv is my new obsession oh, i love <laughs> that i love it lisa <laughs> and then score in there and that is all we have to do to create really gorgeous little favor boxes it's just one of the easiest boxes to do and it's one i love doing every single time and then go into this extra one at the side and this one and then this joe all just slots in together to create that beautiful little triangle box and all you need to do is put a couple of holes into each side tie a ribbon and then you've got those beautiful triangular boxes awesome uh, another great example there of all the wonderful things that you're able to do with that also don't forget as well today's the last day to do or take advantage of the spend 30 pounds or dollars save five pounds or dollars all you need to do is make sure you've got 30 pounds or dollars worth of products in your cart and you'll get that five pound or dollar discount which is fantastic remember what you're receiving in there as well it is a great starter collection for you because in there what you've got is a whole host of different awesome stuff so uh you can see you've got your boards in there i'll take you through what you've got you've got the boxer board uh you're getting the score master the lavender cardstock uh, a tape pen you're also going to get the teddy surprises and the envelope box create a scoreboard as well which is fantastic 44 pounds or 46 dollars is your price there everyone saves almost 19 pounds or over 20 dollars of course even in our craft classes you're able to use your club inspired discount all of you getting some sort of discount off of that as well now i want to roll through through other a few, a few other bits sorry of things that are on the show loads of adhesive for you and this is a brilliant starter kit in here you are going to get the 3d glue gel with the tools you're also going to get the red liner tape the foam pads you're going to get the two tape pens and also the um, all-purpose and tacky glues as well which is fantastic so it really is a comprehensive collection maybe you want to do some fabric uh, items or you want to glue some fabrics uh, this would be perfect for that what Debbie wouldn't it uh, yeah absolutely so we're looking at the textured one so yes this one is brilliant because it's water-based uh, it's uh, it's really good Joe if you've got if it's in anywhere that you've got moisture um, it's completely waterproof it's uh, fast drying it's strong uh, and you can not only use card on this but you can use items such as cork uh, wood sort of thin wood it will glue all that as well so yeah a great one to have awesome great for all your fabrics too 269 or 404 oh chunky glue as our Debbie calls it, our yeah, Debbie, our Debbie, Debbie Robinson. Robinson. She does call it that and it's brilliant. So any of your decoupage work that you've got, anything that you want to add something to to raise it, it's going to be amazing. And it's great because it's odourless. So I do love that one. But yeah, big fan of that one. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, do grab that. Now, uh, felt glue, Debbie. What are we going to do with this one? Yeah, I mean, it does what it says on the tin, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, uh, it says what it does on the tin. But what's great about this is it's solvent free. Uh, so there's no odour with it, Joe. So it's a really good glue. And like the, uh, and it also, so for felt glue, it actually will attach felt to different materials. So if, exactly like your jumper, Joe. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a great one to have. Our Bernie swears by this and uses it all the time. £2.69, great prices here as well. PVA glue without solvent, Debbie. Yeah, so PVA glue, it, it's obviously, it's without solvent is fabulous for children. Okay. So, but it's also good if you don't like any strong odour because solvent has a sort of odour about it as well. So PVA glue, it glue is great. It washes out easy. Uh, it will go on to things like polystyrene and foam and lightweight plastics, that sort of thing, Joe. So yeah, it's a really good household one to have. And because it washes out it's great for kids oh uh, okay but it's sort of thing that you'd apply with a spatula at school is it that kind of that's stuff? it and yeah. obviously big areas so if you've got a lot you're working on uh, kids school holidays you know or the kids being off school you can use it for their posters and all sorts of things it's yeah really good glue it's a big size what's well, half a liter that one by the way so uh really great value the next one is the kids glue debbie yeah, the same thing. It's odourless, it's water-based, and uh, it works exactly the same as the uh, PVA glue, uh, but it's been spe specifically made for children in mind, so okay. uh, they're not going to mind getting sticky with this at all, and it washes off as well. So it's going to be gentle on hands and fingers and stuff like Absolutely, that, so we don't need to worry. Yeah. Yes. Okay, brilliant, and washes out. I mean, that is perfect, isn't it? 
Uh, so £7.19 if you want to go for that one. Right, next we have a multi-buy for you. It's three for two across three of our most popular. So tacky glue, uh, Debbie, I know this is your favourite, It's isn't my it? absolute favourite. I could not live without my tacky glue. It's the one thing I have on me all the time. It's the best glue, I think, in the world. It dries really quickly. It dries clear. It's water-based. There's no odour. Uh, and you can put it pretty much on anything, Joe. It will stick so many of your different items. Uh, it's a great glue, and we're definitely going to be uh, covering what you can do with that. Brilliant. Uh, 499 if you want to go for that one. We've then got as well the Odorless 3D Glue Gel. Yeah, Joe, this is the same as what come up before. So this is chunky glue, but you get a kit with this. So the kit is brilliant. So I'm going to show you exactly how you can fill your syringe and how you use the tools in it. So yeah, it's a great one to have. And once you've bought that tool uh, kit, Joe, you only then need to ever buy just the glue on its own. Awesome. Uh, we then have, of course, the Hero, which is the all-purpose. Yeah, Leanne's absolute favourite. This is a solvent glue, so it does have a little bit of a smell on it, but it's not too strong. Uh, but this is a really, like, strong glue. This dries like concrete, Joe. It's an amazing glue. So if you want something to really be held together, this one is the bad boy that's not coming apart. Bad boy, £2.99 or £7.95. Uh, now, if you want something that is so comprehensive, I mean, this is such an iconic product here at Crafters Companion. It is the Ultimate Pro. Now, it's the UK version. Whether you're buying in the UK or in the US or in Europe, you will be getting the UK version, which is absolutely great if you're using UK cardstock. So if you're buying your cardstock from us here in A4 and A3, then you are going to love this. If you've got a lot of 12 by 12, that doesn't matter because you can cut it down to A4 and then you can use it on here as well. 33.99 or 59.45. How would you even begin to explain this to someone that's never seen it before, Debbie? So for me, this is your ultimate craft room in a box. Really, honestly, it's a carry handle. You can take it wherever you want. It's secured by one of these clips. And I know I've been asked before, someone's lost their clip or broke their clip. Just ring up head office and they'll kindly send you one out. So never a problem. So this will hold it all together. You can see on the back, this is the back of it. So this one is our uh, envelope maker. You can see all our different embossed details here. So you can emboss these uh, into any cardstock. If I turn it round you've got your main scoring board tool on the back so if you want to make your gate folds your half fold cards all your different cards on here are explained I'm going to turn it back over I'm going to take my clip off this is how easy the board is I'm going to open it into the center the center folds out to this whole craft room that you've got here these can create all your different apertures you've got your box lid and base for making your boxes obviously they won't go as big as using your bit your score master or your big score so if you do all these boards have their reasons but this is a great one to have you've got all these deco different decorative uh, images in there you've also got this compartment which is amazing so in that first bundle you would see that we've got that teddy bear board uh, that teddy bear board will store in there in fact any of your boards that you've got for your ultimate will store nicely inside there and then if I go I'm going to put it to the front and then I'm going to open this up because what you've got here is all your tools all in this box which is amazing so you've got your scoring tools straight away you've got your pegs here I'm going to take them out and show you what they're used for uh, we've then got our ruler so I'm going to take that out as well we've also got a little mini craft knife Joe so just be careful it's just got a little clip that you open and it's just got a little knife in there that you can bring out your little uh, knife edge uh, if I open this back up into the center you'll see this section in the middle has been made specifically to fit our ruler in there so you've now got a scoring board and a, not a scoring board sorry you've now got a cutter in there because your cutting knife you can pop your let me just grab myself a piece of card you can pop this through into here hold it down Let's lift it up first. Just wanted to say Hold we're getting straight. a lot of glue questions in, Debbie, Ooh. which we're loving. So when we do the glue school, we'll do all the glue questions then. But keep getting them in now, and then I'll pop them over to Debbie. So I know I haven't answered them yet. Don't worry, I will get to them, but we'll do them when we cover 
all of the different adhesives, if that's okay. Absolutely. So you need to take this out to shut it because it won't shut without it. But this is a really good board to work on then. So we're going to pop that back. I'm then going to bring in, let's pop all our bits back here. I'm then going to bring in my this booklet. Now, this really is the booklet that everyone needs to go with their ultimate. It teaches you everything you can do, uh, including, it tells you what you have. You have a bow maker in here. So if I just bring my board round, can you see on the top here you've got pegs and I have no ribbon at hand unfortunately but what you would do is and I've put those pegs down Joe look at that how do they disappear oh they're gone I didn't put that's them back, it they've gone I? into vanish into thin air no craft fairy they taking literally, them oh my goodness is your ultimate on top of them yes, yes. Oh, George is so clever, isn't she? <laughs> Thought they Not her first time at the rodeo, I don't think, you know. But what you do, Joe, is you put these into the actual holes and then you tie your ribbon around them and make your bow. So it's like someone putting two fingers up. You know when you tie them around and do the, the bunny ears? It's like that. And you can make really different sized bows. So you can have a really big bow. You can make a, um, a smaller ones. You can make really diddy ones if you just put them in the end there. So that's short bow maker which is fabulous but the actual booklet that you get and these all store nicely into your um, ultimate you get two different scoring tools in there going to pop that back on and bring in this one so it tells you all to do so all the bits that it can make so your pop-out cards decorative embossing your paper trimmer storage accessories uh, envelope making box making bow making card making I mean it really does do everything so you've literally then got all your uh, different cards that you can make on here and honestly Joe, this is a handful go on our website you will type in the ultimate you'll find so many I mean there are hundreds and hundreds of products that you can make um, you can also go to the, um, the there's DVDs on the market as well that you can also find so all these different ones to tell you how to do them tells you exactly how to make your bow maker so you can see putting them apart wrapping your ribbon around it tells you how to do them and creating the perfect bow it tells you how to make K cards we've got shaped boxes in here aperture cutouts it really is loads in there and then we've got our extensive envelope maker which is brilliant so we'll guide you through that later on so first of all what does the ultimate do why would I want it really the best thing about the ultimate is this side of the board to start with just so before just, we get into that Debbie yeah, just to touch absolutely. on sizes again I know this is the UK sizing that we're looking yes. at isn't it Mary Ann asks is the only difference between the US version and the UK version of the ultimate board the measurements yes so basically, um, if you did want this in America, you could use it. It's not a problem. The, and the reason there's a difference in the American sizes is because there are, we, they don't do an A4 card size, Joe. Uh, I believe theirs is 11 by... It's US letters, so eight. a little bit shorter and a little yes, bit wider. Oh, it must be bigger, yeah. So it's slightly a different size, which means when you come to do them on the board for the English version, you would have to have a piece of size, a, a piece of card the size of our A4 size um, so hopefully that makes sense but that is the only difference is the measurements so straight away you can see on here well I'm not sure if you can see and actually it's been purposely done Joe I can see them they're very clear so I've got a gatefold here gatefold A5 uh, and then I've got a gatefold A4 you've got your trifold A4 your half fold A5 your five inch square and then your half fold A4 now the reason reason it is on there Joe is because um, I think Joe's got it which we could probably do a bit closer but the reason we've put the mounted into here let me um there we go. If I angle it, we can see, can't we? Yeah, there we go. The reason that's been done, Joe, is so they never wear off. Because you know when lots of people print things, even if it's good ink and it's sort of engraved, it's, it wears off. This yes. will never it's wear sort off. sort of embossed, isn't it? Absolutely. It's embossed into there, and that's the reason. So you will be able to see all of those in detail when you're working with the board. Now, I like to always use uh, from my... Um, if you use from the handle size... Uh, when you're then putting into what you need, it will go perfectly well. Have I done that right? I've done it the wrong way. 
uh, gatefold. Let me turn it round. I've got myself confused with which way round that I use it, Joe. So we've got our, uh, that's it. So use it from the, it's because I always read it from the bottom. So I did have it right. Always butt it up to the handle side. Then I'm going to go into A4 half fold. That will give me the perfect A4 scoring line. So just into shape, and then you just use your scoring tool to halve that to, um, sorry, burnish it in half. Then what we're going to do, we're going to go back in, and it says that we can do our, tri sorry, handle size. It says then we can do our trifold A4 or trifold A5. Now that means if you've done half of your card size to an A5 card, you would then use that line. But because we've used an A4 line, we're going to use our trifold Sorry, I'm looking gatefold, sorry. There we go. I'm doing not doing trifold, we're doing a half fold gatefold. So folding that in half. Now what you've done here, Joe, if I fold this back and crease it, so we'll burnish it there, we've got our standout half fold double card there. So that takes it on that side of things. But if we was then to um pop oh and actually if I fold it the other way, Joe, just so you can show out of that fold, you've got two different ones. If I fold it that way, you've actually got your easel card. So that's where you would fold your top have your top bit so you've got an easel card um, but we've got our gatefold tie and then if I turn it round the opposite way and use it again on the gatefold half fold we can fold that again and then this time fold it back on itself How and awesome. then if we want to be really clever Joe, the other thing we can do which is good we've got these decorative elements on here and swells on this side so if I wanted to I could put I'm going to just angle this and we're going to go in now all you're going to do is find the groove so I'm going to bring that down a bit can you see I'm going to bring in my smaller ball tool the smaller one tends to get more in the ridges and I'm just feeling as we go along and you can see that's using, I'm using that ball tool just to feel, it doesn't matter if it goes off a little bit, just go back to you can feel that ridge and the whole one will just follow itself down. Now some people, Joe, use a um, tumble drying sheet. Right, and they to will, do what you with? Can, to, to actually rub your card with. To line the card with. To rub your card with. Rub it with, and okay. And what that does is it allows the ball tool to smoothly it goes more smoothly so and it does work so it's quite a nice little tip so if you've got tumble drying sheets uh, you can What's use the them. other thing someone talked about using apparently tumble drying sheets you can also use if you don't have an anti-static bag was another thing i heard oh an anti-static bag they probably do work like that rubber yes. tumble dry sheet because it's anti-static it, it removes the static apparently yeah. Ah, yeah i don't use tumble dry sheets am i missing out no i don't use them do you either. know why i don't use them i just realized i haven't got a tumble dryer <laughs> why you don't use them <laughs> what am I like uh, and there we go so we've created a card blank straight away but a completely different constantina one so the other thing I want to show is I'm going to take another piece of card first of all we're going to score this just remember as well if you're looking at this and you think oh I love it I need even more inspiration there's master classes galore and inspiration galore over on the crafters tv area of our website so do go over there I know Sarah's done a master class on this uh, there was a launch there is also USB support as well if you want to uh, buy a USB with hours more inspiration with Sarah on it too so we're really going to hold your hand every step of the way uh, if you're seeing through this for the first time so it's fair to say you're going to be able to get all of the education aren't you Debbie when you go for this oh absolutely absolutely Joe. and what I'm going to do actually I've just um, not that it matters we can use that piece and then I'm just going to use one of the lilac yeah there's so much inspiration joe sometimes it blows my mind how much there is out there i mean when you think we've been doing it for 14 years now on crafters um for crafters companions so it's a long time to get all those uh, bits to get all those uh, different tut tutorials out there so i've got a card blank here and i've also made myself an insert to go on the inside of my card so you can see we've done that about century we did it exactly the same way as what we did this card but we're going to make a totally different card out of it so what we're going to do is take it I'm going to bring in my box board which is let me just find that Joe I'm just finding my I've got so many bits here Joe I'm just trying to find my board shall we come back to it because I can't 
What have you lost now, I've Debbie? Lost oh, I put it in there, didn't what I, you? Joe? You okay? Oh. You okay, hun? I'm all right you now, Joe. Hun. I'm all right now. It's about as bad as Joe not having a tumble dryer, isn't it? <laughs> 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 so now, can you see this? This is brilliant. All your boards slot in. Can you see? There's a little notch up here, and there's a little notch down here, and these will just go into there, so your board sits firmly onto your actual ultimate which is amazing so it means things like this teddy bear one so this is in your if you've gone for that first one comes with that scoring collection it means that what we can do is we could add so i'm going to just turn this around the other way what we can do is i'm turning this round there's a line down the center of this teddy bear that has been purposely put there so if i bring there you go we can just see the the light in that that line there. Now because we've got a line it means we can butt our card, can you see it fits perfectly up to that scoreboard. So but what I am going to do is bring it up, I'm going to bring it up a little bit more because I want to get my uh, teddy bear central. Then what we're going to do Joe, we're going to go round there. So to start with we're going to find our place it just sort of goes in there and then it goes, we can then fill. You can keep looking, so don't be afraid to, uh, to look to see where that's going to go. And you you can of, kind of feel it, can you? You can sort of feel it, but then you sort of, like there, I was thinking that went down and actually it goes across. Right. And I'm not worried about that, Joe. It doesn't matter. That and that, I guess if you're going inside the line, are you going to cut that out I'm anyway? I'm going to cut that out anyway. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're in doubt, always try and move to the inside rather than the outside, I guess, then. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But to be honest, Joe, you don't really notice them once you're creating your card. Right. They're really not noticeable. So you just go to where that takes you. You can see that was nice and easy. And then the great thing, and the reason that I've only done one side is because then all I'm gonna do is fold my card in half and then we're gonna cut that out. So you just go inside. Now you can choose which you want to do. You can either go on the outside line, which I'm going to do, or the inside line, and then you get that embossed detail around the outside edge. So just take your time and cut this out and you'll get that beautiful shape on the inside. So just cutting it round, following it round. And you can do this, there's ones in, if you've got the Ultimate Pro already, you will find that there's butterflies in there and shapes in there that you can cut out and do the same card with. All instructions are in the booklet, so you'll find that there's everything there that you need to know. But if you haven't got the Ultimate Pro, honestly, treat yourself and have something that really works well in the craft room. Uh, it's portable, you can take it wherever you want, you can have it in the lounge, on your lap, so everything is portable and that gives us that beautiful teddy bear image in the center so what i'm going to do then um i nearly called you craig there joe i don't oh. know why yeah well i take that as a compliment i, have, I, I think oh, craig's well, brilliant good. so he's a much more talented crafter than i am though <laughs> so I've just decorated the front of this card. I haven't finished it off at all, but I have decorated my teddy bear with the pattern papers inside. You've also got that beautiful bow that you can use. And if I bring in the board, Joe, you've actually got top hats on there. You've got little hats on there. Uh, you can see at the top here. And then you've got bows at the bottom on here. You've got all different elements. You can have that butterfly. And then the opposite side of this board, uh, you've got beautiful tags in there. You've got your milk bottle. I mean, you can make some really fun things out of that. And then you've got your house designs in the centre there. So there's so many different things on this board that you will absolutely love. But to be able to create this out of uh, that teddy bear one is really such a cute little design to have. So I'm going to uh, decorate this one afterwards for my uh, granddaughter because she'll be two in May. So I figure she would absolutely love that teddy bear card. Has so, she given you yeah. her shopping list yet for her birthday? Uh, my Ruby has, yes. Yeah, she's Ruby six in a couple she? of weeks and mm. I've got a big, big list. <laughs> she's very demanding, Debbie. She's I don't know where demanding. she gets it from. I don't know where she gets it from, Joe. <laughs> Not a clue. Anyway, moving on. Well, uh, Dale says, good morning, Joe and Debbie. I love your sweater, Joe. Thank you, Dale. Uh, so my friend John made this for me uh, and I love it. I saw a very expensive designer one online, Debbie. 
uh, and we managed to recreate it for about nine pounds instead of <laughs> about 109 pounds. It's very happy. I think I might get in some more colours. Eleanor says, I'm, uh, I'll tell you, learning from CCTV is better than having to go to school and more fun. Also, every day you are learning something new. Michelle Matson says, thank you, Debbie, for starting. I uh, stating which of the glues are odour free? I am very sense sensitive, so it's really lovely to know. I have got so many questions coming in uh, about glues and adhesives, and I am ready to pass them all over to Debbie, but you've still got time to get your questions in as well. Let's, in fact, um, just share with you, why don't we, just the features of what this amazing Ultimate Pro is capable of. Take a look. The Ultimate Crafter's Companion is an all-in-one compact carry case which is going to allow you to score, measure, trim, emboss and embellish. The case incorporates 10 vital paper crafting tools all rolled into one lightweight and portable product. If you're crafting at home, this makes a great workstation. Or the carry case design allows you to easily pack up everything you need for crafting on the move. With the Ultimate Crafter's Companion, you can make hundreds of different cards in all shapes and sizes. Working with standard card and paper size, you can fold anything, from basic bifold, trifolds and gatefold cards, right up to pop-out, jump-up cards, or even more complex keepsake books. Simply rest your cardstock against the carefully calculated grid lines, read off the desired size, and use one of the specially designed scoring tools to create an accurate and very professional crease. Every card needs an envelope, and with the Ultimate Crafter's Companion, you can make envelopes in any shape and size to match all your handmade cards. Package your delicate craft projects in colour-coordinated matching envelopes, and add a professional finishing touch. No longer will you be restricted to making cards to correspond with ready-made envelope sizes. With hundreds of possible size combinations, your imagination is the limit. And for those really special dimensional cards, you can create 3D box envelopes to not only house, but to protect your handmade card creations. Create your own boxes in any shape and size, from a matchbox right up to a shoebox. All of the calculating and measuring has been taken care of for you, so you can simply follow the guide and create custom sized boxes which fit together perfectly. Triangular, hexagonal, diamond shaped boxes are all possible, as well as your regular boxes. You can also create specialised exploding boxes or expanding boxes too. You can even make your own favour boxes for those special occasions. Any craft tool box should include a paper trimmer and when you're crafting on the go with the ultimate paper crafting tool, you'll need a paper trimmer at your fingertips. The integrated trimmer stores inside the tool and clips into place for easy access. The ergonomically designed cutting mass holds a standard sized blade which is very easy to replace. Create delicate embellishment for your paper crafting projects with the integrated bone maker. The simple six step process will allow you to create perfect bows in an instant. For paper embellishment you can use the decorative embossing shapes which are featured throughout the board. Emboss onto special papers, vellums or even acetate to create your own intricate toppers. Everything you need comes included with the tool and stores inside for easy access. Each unit includes a full colour instruction book, cutting mouse and ruler, the bow making pegs and two specially designed scoring and embossing tools. Whether you're crafting on the move or using this as a complete workstation at home, the Ultimate Crafters Companion provides you with all the tools you need at your fingertips. It really, I know, I know we banded, this term gets banded around a little bit these days, but it is an iconic crafting product. Like, I know you're going to absolutely uh, love it. It is on a fabulous deal for it. It's the UK version, 33.99 or 59.45. Let's move on to the adhesives because the time has come for you to adhesive school, uh, which is what we're going to do now. So uh, I hope you're feeling very studious. Uh, and I've got your learning caps on as well. Let me share with you the starter kit because this is where we're going to start. It's a very good place to start. Uh, in here, what you're getting is you're getting the 3D glue gel, the chunky glue, as it's affectionately known, the tacky glue, the all-purpose, the red liner, the craft foam pads, and both of our iconic 
tape pens as well. It's an awesome, awesome collection. I've got loads and loads of questions. Still keep getting them in. I think what Debbie's going to do is give us sort of a brief overview, Debbie, if that's all right. And then uh, we'll get into any questions that we haven't answered. We'll then come, come back and answer them. Uh, but if it's not too late, if you wanted to pop a question in, then you can. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion across on YouTube. Please don't forget as well that if you're shopping in the show, try and get your basket up to £30 or dollars because then you're going to get that extra £5 or dollar discount as well which is awesome. Uh, right, Debbie, then, glue school. I feel like um, I was a really bad student at school, so I'm going to pine to be a bit better behaved, less disruptive this time around, OK? Yes, please do, Joe. Otherwise, you will um, you'll get a slapped paw. <laughs> a slapped what? A slapped paw. Paw? Oh, yes. I wonder what you said then for a moment. OK, no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just having a play because I just thought of something that I could show you as well. So we will do that. So first of all, glue school. I've got all the glues in the bundle. Now, what I love about this bundle, Joe, is it is the bundle. Uh, we've got that overhead, so let me bring it all down like this. It's the bundle which is your essentials. So you do have foam paper pads in there as well I believe but I think we've covered everything so red liner tape is brilliant that is probably your utmost uh, stickiest strongest tape that there is if it's got red liner tape on it uh, red on it then it is the just the best thing. Is it the bee's um, knees? It's the bee's knees, absolutely. The cat's pyjamas? It's all of those, and, and above, yeah, even <laughs> more, so, so much more. Uh, tacky glue, tacky glue is water-based. It means you can use it for all sorts of mediums. Now, this quick drying is amazing, and I'm gonna bring in a board now. This board here, uh, you may think is very strange, Joe, but everything on this board, a stone, like a pebble, uh, we've got like a, a bead there, We've got, um, what do they call these? It um, uh, begins with C. Um, little, um, oh, I can't think what it's called. Not the flower, but the actual material. Canvas? No, I'll think of it in a little while. So, but flowers, buttons, even my tape pen is stuck to the board. So if anyone gets desperate, you could have that. I'll think of it <laughs> We nearly did last buttons. year. Yeah, <laughs> but look, a little mini screwdriver. We've got little metal charms. We've got plastic, stone, wood chips. Uh, this one is, I mean, look how strong that is. That is actually stuck on. Um, and this is all fastening. using the... All using the tacky glue. Awesome. Yeah, so that is an amazing glue. What you do with tacky glue... Is it so sort of thing you could sort of like fix your shoes with if you had a flappy heel or that sort of stuff yeah you could yeah i mean to be honest if you've got something like that you really want to use something like your textile glue okay but tacky glue is the one glue that does fix so many different things and it's great but what i am going to say to you about tacky glue i'm going to bring in just a piece of card the thing with tacky glue is it's more tacky the longer you leave it okay so i'm going to bring in my tacky glue i always like to give it a shake shake up the bottle um and then what I'm going to do and also you can see I'm using Centura because it means I can put my glue onto Centura and know that that will not and I'm just going to rub that in so you can see. So now, it's friendly on fingers then you don't have to worry about it getting on contact it's with that skin or anything based, like that. It's washable you haven't got to worry about your skin I mean obviously if you do have any skin problems make sure you test things out first or look at the ingredients but to be honest um, this is a great glue for all I've never had any problems with this whatsoever now you can see this glue doesn't take off so even if I push that about it doesn't take off any of the shine of my Centura now even though I've put it onto this side I'm talking about if you smudge it so let's put a bit of a blob onto there and I'm sort of wafting this around ideally you want to leave this at least 30 seconds 30 seconds to a minute and that will then start to that look can you see that's holding on to my finger Joe it's actually become wow. tacky so I'm going to just wipe that off because that's on there. But it actually becomes more tackier the longer you leave it. And then it makes it more adhesive. So when you then place it onto here, and I've put that splodge. Oh, it wasn't a big enough splodge. Let me put another splodge. Oh, it's probably on the other side. I'm going to put that splodge on there like that. And I like then I'm going to wipe splodge. that away. Because what will happen, even though I've wiped that away, it won't affect my work. 
and that's what I love about tacky glue. So not only is that really, really strong now, even the splodges, I can wipe away and it won't wipe away my shine. I still have shiny Centura on there. Same with glitter cards, same with mirror cards. So anything that's got a coat in, tacky glue is what you want to use. Uh, and that's really strong now, Joe. So I'm just gonna massage that in a bit. And when we try to pull that apart, that's actually stuck. That's really stuck on there. So that gives you a really strong hold. And then leave that because it'll get, the more it dries, the more harder that will become. So that will be really, really sticky. So that's your water-based tacky glue, which is good for all sorts of projects. Um, quick dry and it dries clear as well. So anything that you've got that you want to cover, uh, that's got a covered sort of uh, medium onto it, then you want to use tacky glue. Now the solvent-based glue, Kalau, is what Leanne calls the best glue in the world because it has an amazing hold on it. Now what I am going to do, I'm going to bring in a piece of card and we're going to place this. In fact, I'm just going to cut this down, Joe. So in fact, we can just uh, cut it, tear it in half. And actually, let's, let's make this quite secure. Now because I, I am, so let me just put this on. Now what will happen, oh, let me make sure I've not got a blockage. I think it's my glue running out. You can see this is a clear gel. So I'm just putting it all over here. Now what that will do, that will create a bond onto my cardstock. So just putting it onto here. And then what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to bend it again. So I've just done that. So I've created my first piece of cardstock. I'm going to bend that again over Joe. And then we're going to glue those two pieces together. Now what I'm going to do this time though, I'm going to saturate so the whole surface has got my glue on there. So just using that nozzle just to go across and putting plenty on. So let's say this was something like we were making, do you know like the kids get like kids masks that you cut out in books and that? Mm -hmm. Or you want to make your own uh, mask if you go to like these uh, master aid balls. Um, this will dry. Uh, really, really hard. It is a completely, um, and this is the other thing it does, Joe. So I'm going to do this a bit, so you can oh, see. Oh, I love it when glue does this. Yeah, it make look at that. That's not my hands dirty, by the way. I've got clean hands, but it actually rolls it all up into a little ball. So it wipes away. You're getting no smudges left on that, which I love. So when it comes off, all you do is actually just rub it and it becomes like a little rubber ball. So you just put that in the bin. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tacky glue at the moment to roll this around. Right. And then we're going to sort of leave this in place until the end of the show. And I'm hoping that by the end of that show, it's dried enough to be able to see that that will dry into place. It okay. might not be. I put quite a lot on there so I'm getting glue everywhere so but all I'm doing is rubbing it because all that bits of glue you can see it's all on my hands it will just come off so holding that into place and then I'm gonna and actually it's something that's not in the show oh we can use our liner tape Joe. let me just hold that round because that will secure it into place so let's pop that in there just remind me at the end of the show You're using all the glues here aren't you using the tacky glue as the uh, <laughs> the mould, you've yeah. got the red liner to hold it in place, you've so used it all perfect. You need the mould, clearly. Need the mould. So I'm just going to leave that uh, and we'll let that dry till later. In fact, I don't really need that because I've got my glue that's holding, my tape that's holding it on. So if I do need my glue pot, we can use it later on. Just going to clear my fingers. And then what we're going to do is bring in our red liner tape. Now the red liner tape is particularly strong. So what we think with red liner tape, Straight away, we then think if we put it onto our card, so put it onto here, cut that off. What I would always say with any tape glue is just make sure you massage it down or use the back of your scissors as I just did to hold that down. Take that off and then you can, you've got instant stick straight awesome. away. Awesome. If you so want the, just red liner, the details are on the bottom of your screen, uh, three, six and 12 mil sizes in that bundle there. So the trouble is with red liner tape is if you want something that you can move about, 
then, and it's not the trouble, it's a great thing, but if you want something you want to move, then don't put, don't use this regular is not tape. That. It does not shift about. Once it's stuck, it's stuck. So you would just be literally, look, I mean, it's, if I pull that, Joe, that's took the tape off. That right. piece of card it literally has took the coating off because it's that strong so it will stay stuck but there's lots of other things you can do with it as well so i'm going to bring in my piece it of card it gives you here. instant stick then debbie does it also give you long lasting stick is it yes. fair to say yeah uh, what's really great about this one is it will last a long long time but also joe you can create effects with it as well so just a plain piece of card i've just gone across and put my i mean can you see how easy it is to take the tape off as well I mean I haven't got I haven't got long nails I've got very short nails and I'm able to take that tape off no problem at all and that's quite important because a lot of people have real trouble I've known red liner tapes on the market where I've had to use my pokey tool or a pair of scissors to get that edge up I can just use a tiny bit of my nail and it takes them up but what you can do we had some beautiful glitters in the show this morning and we'll have them in the later show at seven uh, but you can use it as your glitter adhesive so you can actually put on your glitter onto your tape and it's a really nice way of creating really gorgeous backgrounds just awesome. using that on there and what's really nice about this I'm going to um, I'm going to show you is you get that I mean look at that Joe I mean how amazing is that looks gorgeous as your background but if you rub it Joe now this is what's really great you get like a, a really sparkly shiny finish oh cool so you really I mean look at that it's so lovely uh, I've and seen then what you've got do this with the gilding flakes as well which work really well you know that's the it yes ones. you can do it with gilding flakes it's a great way to add any of those mediums to um, just really lovely so if I just pull that away and look at that give that a blow and then it encapsulates all that glitter I mean it looks like we've put like shiny tape on there shiny. so that's a really great way of just creating gorgeous backgrounds using your glitter now the last one I want to show you, oh actually we've still got the tape pens haven't we Joe? Oh, how can we forget the iconic how can we tape, forget pens? Our tape pens but I do want to show you that because the, the uh, 3d glue gel uh, is amazing so I would definitely go for this set to first of all get the box with the tool because what you'll see is when I open it up you'll get all your tools in here that you need so first of all your glue that will be sealed so you will have a little tiny notch on the top so I'm just finding the end to take that away so pulling that completely apart that then allows your glue so you can see actually I think got a feeling let me just um, use my pokey tool there don't think it removed the seal there we go. Didn't want to come across. So that, there we go. That's coming out now, Joe. And I'm just going to grab myself some paper and then get this out the way. So what you're going to do when you first uh, get this? Did I, Joe? Did you see? It's, do you know what's happened? Sorry, Joe? I'm having a lovely time over here reading all the clues, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> what would you like from me? It's all right. I'm looking for. I tell you what, fell out. Someone has replaced my um, in the actual pot. Uh, let me find one, and then I will. Show what are you it. after? So, I thought they were all in there, but actually, what's happened? If I, I've got two of these, someone's oh. pinched. What, the actual, what bit you need? The, the syringe? The syringe, yes. Well, let's see if I can furnish you with a syringe. Let's yes, have a look. there will be one in there. Yeah, I think someone's been at my one. Me and, and packaging, we don't, we don't you know, I have a well documented battle with packaging. Here we go, there Debbie, I'm coming is. over. Joe's kindly bringing it over to me. Lovely. There you Thank are. Thank you very much. Right, so you get your syringe in yours. Don't worry, you will get one. Mine has been in my cup of rages, and I think someone, I, in fact, it was probably me, if I'm honest. <laughs> so you're getting your two parts, the part for your syringe and this bit here. What do you then do? This piece goes on the bottom. So you place it on the bottom, and that's your turner. So you turn that round, a bit like toothpaste, isn't it? So what I would say is hold the bottom when you first get your new one. You're going to place your tube into there and hold it and then just squeeze up from the bottom so you're squeezing all that glue never fill it right to the top you've got quite a lot of glue in there and then what you're going to do is grab this piece and you're going to pop that up the bottom 
Um, sorry. <laughs> 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 Debbie! Oh, Merry Christmas! <laughs> Where are you going to put it, Debbie? In the base. Not up the bottom. <laughs> oh, don't come back to me! <laughs> Oh, that is a good one, Debbie. That was, I mean, make a note, a note the time, everyone, 2 p.m. <laughs> we'll clip that one out later. It'll go on social media. Don't you worry about that. That was gold, Debbie. Absolute gold. Are you okay? You can vote. Are you ready to go? <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie's definitely not I ready to go. I don't actually know what to say now. So once you've... Put the syringe into the, into the base. So once you've inserted... <laughs> Let's just take a moment. Give let's me the show words. you. Give me the just, words. Let's just, I, I say. think we just need a, a minute whilst Debbie just composes herself and reworks the wording of that demonstration. <laughs> let's share with you how you can watch and shop at the same time. Hi, I'm Joe from Crafters TV, and I'm here to show you how you can grab the best deals and shop whilst you watch during our shows. So the best way to watch us is always on Crafters TV. Head on over to our homepage and go to Crafters TV. You can see all of our shows, offers, and even shop while you watch. Now, if you want to get involved and comment along, head over to our Facebook page. Come say hello, ask us some questions, and lol with us. Or you can watch us on YouTube. Simply head to our Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Got a smart TV? You can even airplay directly onto your big screen. We're constantly adding new and exciting shows to our schedule, so don't forget to check in. It's never been easier to have us in your living room. It's always fun here at Crafters TV, so come join us as we create every day. <laughs> Three, two, one, back in the room. Uh, okay, right, Debbie, are you ready to uh, recommence that demonstration? It got very, very non-PG there all of a sudden. Are you, are you okay? I know, I'm so Good. sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't quite know how to word it but um it's a syringe isn't it so uh, we're okay <laughs> uh, so you put it inside the bottom of the syringe <laughs> <Don't stop again. laughs> <Jay! laughs> what did you say <laughs> because i have to say it i have to say it somewhere. okay anyway let's get right okay but let's get on with it <laughs> Now, once this is in this syringe, you have ages that will not go dry at all, Joe. So what might happen is you might get a blockage. That's all I can We say. can't do another video, we've just done one. Oh, okay. You might, but you might get a blockage. <laughs> I'm never doing this to get out of clear school. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, yeah, well, I'm following. No blockages just yet, thankfully. Now, do you, you just push harder if you get a blockage? You can sort your blockage. <laughs> How do you do that? Right, so this is serious. This is serious. Stop it. <laughs> When you, when you, <laughs> you, I've stopped it now. Come on. <laughs> oh, if dear. I can't see now. Oh, I do, do apologise. Right, I'm so sorry. Right, what you do is you squirt it. You push a little bit at the top. I think we can see it, hopefully. You can see that tiny bit of glue that's come out there, Joe. Yep. Always leave it like that. And then what you do is you put your lid over the top and then when you take your lid off, it's still there, but if it's gone hard, you just, you just pull it out. Okay, wonderful. Just pick it off. Yeah, you just pick it off. Fabulous. You can do that. And another little tip about the, uh, about the actual um, glue nozzle, when you, before you put the lid on, always have that blob of glue. <laughs> Joe, stop it. Always have that blob. <laughs> on the top <laughs> and then you put your lid
it on. <laughs> why is it? That blob I don't know why it's funny, Debbie, but it really is. There we go. <laughs> Oh, let's move We're on from the chunky glue. glue. Yeah, let's move on from <laughs> the chunky glue. Nearly finished us off the 3D oh, glue gel. I think, I think oh. you've all got that, so that's good. And actually, I have to say, I mean, aside from anything else, this glue is amazing. Uh, it's brilliant then for creating your decoupages, for anything that you want to stand out. Uh, it's a really good glue, glue gel. And it doesn't have any scent at all, Joe, which is really important for a lot of people. So a great glue to have. Yeah, because the silicone ones can be a bit whiffy, can't they? Yes, and the other thing we haven't uh, touched on is you do get a little nozzle for the top of your glue as well so if you're someone that doesn't like to use it by the actual um maybe we could just demonstrate the nozzle next time instead of this i think syringe, we will yeah? i'm gonna de demonstrate the nozzle next time we won't even go into <laughs> syringes <laughs> i don't know how do hospitals get on they must uh, do a lot of faux pas when um with their syringes that they're, they're using. So the last thing, sorry, in that bundle is the tape pens. So quick demonstration on these. Uh, the t there's two tape pens. The dotty one is our very newest to our collection. We've then got the uh, stripped one and the one that has loads of dots on. Now the reason they have dots on is they're great for our, um, uh, oh, I wanted to, oh no, it's not in that bundle, it's okay. I was just, just thinking ahead then, sorry. But I've got just two little die cuts here and I'm going to use some black cardstock. So let me bring some black cardstock into play just so we can see what I'm doing because I've got white die cuts here. Now, this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the big one actually so you can really see it. When I use this one across it, so I'll put this one across and I'm going to fill that with the glue what will happen if i turn that round can you see joe it's all completely stringy you can see all the glue through that because some people would call them glue bogies now i know you wouldn't bogies. and i wouldn't but some people might call them that some people might yes so but if i use this and i'm going to do exactly the same i'm going to go across and fill that when i turn that round and i'm going to stick that one down there is no glue that is poking through there, but if I put that one on, there's lots of glue. So if I move that to the light there, you can see all that stringy glue is through that larger one and you've got nothing there, not even anything that comes off. You can't feel any glue. There's no stick on that, but that one is actually sticking to my finger. So this is the main thing with these. If you do run out of this one, then you can definitely use your dotty pen. That will work exactly the same way. It has the most amazing uh, strength, just as our normal tape pens have. It just means that you're getting the dots instead of the strip. But I would definitely save them just for your die cuts. So, so would you always your, uh, your, your intricate one. straight edge one would always be the go-to, would it? Would that give you a, does that give you a stronger stick, is it fair to say, Debbie, than the dotty one? Well, I think it does give mm. you a stronger one because it fills the whole gap. But the dotty one is the same strength if that makes sense but you've got lots of gaps in between so I would try and stick to your solid one uh, and not the dotty one especially for your construction so doing your boxes doing your card making uh, that one's fine but I would definitely use your dotty one just for your die cuts that are intricate awesome I hope that helps for everyone lots of people says Maureen says gosh that's Joe finished off for the day Laura says I'm in stitches treasure heart says Debbie you are too darling for words uh, Lorraine says you two are both so funny uh, Maureen says she's never gonna be able to use a syringe again without thinking about today <laughs> I love that uh, Sandra says, and the bit I loved out of all of that was George director George and Mayer go oh no not again <laughs> Debbie <laughs> <laughs> was the funniest bit. Uh, Sandra says, a great glue store. We'll never look at glue the same way again. Uh, <laughs> you two really are the cutest troublemakers, lol. Debbie's giggle is absolutely infectious, says uh, Susie T. Uh, I thank you for the extensive use of the extra boards of the Ultima. I love the teddy bear. Right, I've got so many adhesive-based questions for you, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Some of them we might have already got through, but I'll, I'll go through them all again anyway. Um, Pam Craven would like to stick felt onto the ginge the dreamies um mdf boards you know the mdf boards that we sold yep. is she right in thinking that felt glue would be the best for that yeah absolutely and i meant to do this at the beginning actually uh because felt glue is great i mean i'm going to stick felt to felt but it's a really strong glue so why we're we just talking about glue should i quickly go yes, through please, the, felt that. One? Uh, the felt glue uh our bernie lent me this bless her i didn't actually have any felt glue so i actually got a glue school this morning from bernie she was Lovely. amazing and she was telling 
me everything about this glue and actually it's incredible because there's so you can use this now what I didn't know Joe so I've been learning about all glues myself because there's a lot of glues we've got on the show that I haven't particularly used because I stick to our regular glues that we have all the time but so many of our glues go for different things so if you are someone that likes felt making or you deal in felt or you're sticking anything that's fibrous like that of any material it also sticks cardboard thin plastics uh, textiles so it's a really good glue to have if your main craft is felt or materials or textiles but you also then want to dabble in a bit of card making you don't have to buy another specific glue you could just have your felt glue now what Bernie did tell me is don't use a lot of it she was telling me that you want to put it on in dabs so she said just literally just make sure she's left me some in her bottle is uh, she probably has a look oh what is she like <laughs> So there we go. So she said, just dab it on, dab it on in little patches. Um, it looks quite thick, this one. It, it is quite thick, yeah, it's quite thick. So this is what she was saying. You can cover your area, but you just want to dab it on. Now don't saturate, because if you saturate that, it will actually seep through. So even though it dries clear, what you don't want is it to seep through the actual material. And then all you do is you just massage that into the material. So just give giving that a little bit of a rub. She was also telling me she would leave that for at least 12 hours, Joe, cool. because it needs to dry. Because remember, we're putting a wet glue onto something that's fibrous, so it's not gonna dry instantly. Uh, she said the best thing to do is to do it and leave it overnight, and it will be absolutely strong. Um, but she said at least 12 hours, which would, uh, which would be really good. So, and going back to that, so this glue will go onto your MDF, it will go onto your cardboard, your uh, papers, so anything like that so it's a good all-rounder actually joe yeah if you really are is. someone that does materials and paper crafting yeah brilliant so yeah felt to felt or felt to other stuff i mean you could use it for something like this i mean no these felt pieces are stitched on here but i know you could stitch you could you glue felt applique Absolutely. patches couldn't you yes. on bags or a whole host of different Absolutely, things yeah. Uh, so yeah definitely love that one lena says did you say that the collow glue would not make your card and paper warp when you glue layers together I use the all, I think she means the... All purpose. The Aline's glue, but find that it leaves marks on the surface where you have used the glue. Aline's, does that make sense? Yeah, that's a different glue. That's, that's a different a brand, different okay. It's a different brand of glue, but she is right in the solvent glue, um, the Kalau solvent glue, because like I'm showing you that we've put this one round here uh, that's drying, uh, it will warp your card, Joe, right. because it's one of those glues that as it dries, it almost sort of digs into the fibres. So, so it's would gripping. you use it then? What's the sort of cut off then? At what point would you think, right, I'm not going to use Mataki, I'll use all purpose because that's too thin. So like a 180 GSM, would that be an all purpose for you or a stick or a tacky glue? I would go more. So if it's if it's a stronger card, uh, a thicker card, I would go for your um, your your uh, Kalau all purpose. Right. But what I'd also say is it's to do with how much you use. Right. So don't use so much because it's warping your card because you're you're covering your whole card like I did with this piece here. Okay. So if you just so if let's uh, get some card here. What I would say was a good amount of usage on here. So uh, if with this one then the all purpose is it a case of no matter how much you put on it won't it won't warp or, or no, will it still you put, if you put too much you on still it put too warp. much on it yes, will warp okay will warp. so what i'm saying is less is more okay brilliant. so what you want to do joe is what i would say is put a little bit around the edges that's it and i would then stick that onto something i would not fill this gap you don't need to fill that gap all this around the edges i mean if you was to just rub that in that would then be even thinner so that would stick perfectly and it wouldn't warp your card at all. Okay, because that... if you use a lot, it will warp your card. Wonderful. That goes into another question from Vicky who said, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't wrinkle when it goes on, then sometimes it warps as it dries. So I guess the thing is, if you've got glue on all of it, it's all contracting, isn't yeah, it? Whereas absolutely. if you've just got glue on a little bit, you've got yeah. a little bit of shrinkage. Absolutely, so I yeah. hope that helps for you uh, as well there, Gloria. And um, yes, so and I And there hope... is another tip, Joe. If you do put too much on, just weight it down, put a book on 
top oh, of really? it because then it would, it's got nowhere to go. So the glue would just do it as it's as it stays. Same as if we're bending something round to want it to dry. If we lay it flat with something heavy on it, it will stay flat as well. Brilliant. And if you're really getting any problems, switch to your tacky glue. That won't warp at all. Oh, okay. So the tacky glue doesn't warp. No. Brilliant. Uh, Myra says, hi, what is the best, best glue to use when sticking acetate to the back of cardstock? Uh, so red liner tape, but actually more than red liner tape are glue. I would say it doesn't even notice. It's really the tape good. Pen, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and the other thing is with acetate is you could use just a little bit of glue, so your red liner tape on the edges, and just hide it with a little um, gem or something. And there's right. glues to put your gems on with as well. Brilliant. Mm. Uh, Deborah says, is Collal bookbinding glue suitable for using on album spines? It does say about it not being acid free. Yeah, it's not, there is, it's not an, an enormous amount of acid in it. There's, um, let me just, I've wrote myself some notes. So uh, uh, you can thin it out. That's the good thing with bookbinding glue. Right. So you can thin it out, but it has got just a small amount of acid in that one. Uh, okay. But it's a great one to use for all sorts of things, uh, the bookbinding, because it's really strong. It's also used, a lot of people use bookbinding for uh, paints to okay. add uh, to your paints. Would this be the kind of thing, would you use this on the spines of something like your memory book then? That oh, yes, one? Is that how you'd use that? And book folding. Do you know you get book folding? Oh, yeah, book the, folding. All the words, you can use it on that. You can use it on all your spines. So, yeah, perfect for that. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, also, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Lesp says, as this is a back to basic show, can I ask you how to clean photopolymer? It's not glue school. I'll come back to that one, Lesp. Stacey says, which glue is best for vellum and in which one is best to use on glitter cardstock? So, glitter cardstock, definitely tacky. That's the one I go to every time because it's water-based. It won't affect the glitter uh, and it will stick it perfectly. The best thing to do with that, though, is leave it for at least about 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, let it go a little bit tacky and then attach it to your card and just hold it down until it grabs. I would say maybe about 10 seconds, but your, let's take it out of there. Your tacky glue is definitely the one that you want to go for on any coated cardstock. So your glitter, your mirror, your centura, perfect for that. Brilliant, thank you for that, Debbie. Uh, Mary says, hi, Joe and Debbie, happy Sunday. I was wondering what is the best adhesive to use to seal your envelopes before sun sending? Sarah did say on a previous class that envelope gum is good for paper, but not for cardstock. Hope you can help. Yeah, and actually the book binding is really good for that as well, okay. um, to seal them. So uh, yeah, a great one to use. Uh, but if not, just your red liner tapes, they'd be perfect to, uh, to seal them. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, Kathy says, such an interesting show, learning lots, so thank you both. Uh, question from Nona coming in. Nona coming in. Debbie, how long will the glue last in the syringe before it goes hard? Ah, so that's exactly what I was covering, Joe. So, uh, and it really does work. So, a lot of the time, we're not crafting it. I craft every day. My nozzle never goes hard. So, because I'm crafting all the time. But when you pull it off, can you? You probably still see that if I just bring in a darker piece of card. The top of my glue, which I poked out, is still sticking out. Now, if I didn't use this, say for about a few days, a week, that bit in the nozzle will go hard because it's got more air getting into that bit even with my nozzle on the top it's still got more air but what that acts as is a plug so you just grip that and you can pull it out and it will pull out all this bit and because this glue will never go hard Joe okay. that glue will always stay um, like the gel that it should be inside it's just that little plug you want to make each time you place your nozzle on so just make sure you've got that plug pull it out if it goes dry and it'd be perfect if you haven't put a, a bit in that you can pull out just use your pokey tool to get in there to pull that to out, out a little bit awesome. and then you can still pull that nozzle out awesome last glue question then for you debbie do you have tips on preventing residual stains uh, from the coll owl purpose sometimes i use it to adhere paper and it leaves what looks like a little grease mark or a tide mark once it's dried. I have to be honest, I'm not a big lover of using any glues, solvent glues especially, or tacky glue on thin paper. Okay. Uh, because because paper's so thin, it naturally will absorb. They're wet glue, so I wouldn't use wet glue on paper. So I would always either use, even your red liner tape, even though it's super sticky and you don't need it, it's actually better than using a wet glue. But I would definitely say your tape pens are what you need to go for when uh, adhering paper. 
Brilliant. Well, that's all the glue ones. Let's just go back to that question from Lesp, if we may, uh, who says, uh, can I ask how to clean photopolymer stamps, please? Learning loads, and thank you both. Uh, photopolymer stamps, um, we don't do one, but there is a solvent cleaner out on the market, so okay. you will be able to uh, to look for that. So uh, a stamp, if you Google stamp cleaner, you'd be able to get that in. But actually, I never clean my stamps. Um, I'm a dirty girl, unfortunately. I know. I do just re keep re-stamping them until all the ink comes off. Once the, your ink's all come off, your stamp's ready to use for any other colour as well. Uh, so I've got lots of dyed stamps, especially when you're using your pigment ink pads. They do dye your stamps. So, But you can you can get glues, glues out there. Oh, sorry, solvents base products out there to clean them with. Awesome. Well, I hope that's answered all of your questions. I know we had loads <coughs> of questions in. We learned lots there as well from Debbie, which is brilliant. Remember also that you're going to be able to come back and watch this back at any point you like. So you can watch it where you're watching it now. Save it on Facebook. Share it on Facebook. Save it on uh, YouTube. Go back to our website at any point as well, which is awesome. And you'll be able to watch it back, which is fantastic. Uh, remember what you're getting as well, that starter kit there. Uh, so you're getting the hero tools, really. You're getting the, uh, the three glue gel you're going to get both of those tape pens you've got the all-purpose the red liner the foam pads and the tacky glue there as well a great price on that too don't forget you can use your club inspired discount on there as well if you like in fact you know what we're going to just take a moment get ready for debbie's next demonstration so whilst we do that why don't we share with you all the details of club inspired take a look Welcome to Club Inspire, our free loyalty club. As a member of the club, you can save up to 20% every time you shop with us. For every pound you spend, whether it's in one of our stores or on our website, you'll collect one loyalty point. The more points you have, the more benefits you'll receive. As a welcome present, we'll give you 20% discount with your very first order. Once you place your first order, you'll be given 250 points straight away, making you a bronze member. This will mean that you'll receive a 5% discount on all of your purchases until the end of the next calendar year, plus priority postage. 500 points takes you up to Silver Membership, where you'll get 10% discount, plus free shipping when you spend over £20. When you get to 750 points, you'll become a Gold Member, which gets you a whopping 15% discount on every order, and will ship them to you completely free, no matter how big or small they are. Spend over £25 and we'll send them to you via our premium next day delivery carrier service. When you reach 1500 points, you'll become a Platinum member, giving you the same shipping benefits as a Gold member, but with the added bonus of a massive 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now on top of that, you'll receive exclusive discounts, sneak peeks of brand new products, special offers and money saving vouchers. You'll have access to an exclusive secret Facebook group to meet like-minded friends, to find out information first and to be inspired by all the crafty makes. We'll send you a completely free quarterly Digimag direct into your inbox, giving you lots of hints, tips, inspiration, additional offers and some sneaky behind the scenes gossip from the team. So what are you waiting for? Become a member of our club today. So that you do because it's the, just the best way to unlock even more discounts for you as well which I think is fantastic uh, right next up we're going to go back to where we started and it is that scoring starter kit because it is a brilliant starting point if you think if you don't own any kind of scoreboards or embossing boards then you've got so much in here to enable you to create great envelopes boxes card blanks uh, all your card concepts you're going to do and lots of embossing as well um, if you want to go for it you can you've got a great price there as well everyone's got a fantastic saving as well so do make sure you grab it uh, a great maybe a great gift to someone this Debbie if you kn know someone that was maybe considering getting going with crafting this would be a great starting point for them wouldn't it? Oh absolutely the thing is Joe these are core products like any crafter out there that's a paper crafter should have uh, any core products that you can score on that you can uh, use they're just amazing uh, I can't and actually if you've got the ultimate pro these work in conjunction so the boards on there will 
work with your Ultimate Pro as well, which is amazing. But if you don't have the Ultimate Pro, you haven't got to worry because you don't need to use them on there. They're all freestanding boards on their own, which is great. So I'm just going to, I'm going to bring the Score Master back into play because it truly is the one that most of us take everywhere. So it's the one that you're going to use often because it's the one that you can just stand at the side of your desk, put down next to your feet. You can grab it, you can put it in your craft bag. You are going to take this with you everywhere you go. This one's got fee written on it. I'm wondering if Fiona's left hers. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to be using this one. First of all, we're going to show how to make another different box and I'm just going to cut my card to size. So I think first of all, we will just, I'm going to do it seven inches. Uh, so we'll just trim that down to seven inches by seven inches. So just getting ourselves a nice card blank. And then I'm going to do the same with some other papered uh, cardstock that we've got here. So this is our navy and blush cardstock. Popping that there and then using this on the other side. So again, seven inches. So what I've done is created two pieces of card uh, exactly identical. So they're the same size. Now it's the one thing that's really important to remember uh, when you're doing any sort of boxes, you do need to make them the right size for what for the project that you're doing, as, as identical sizes. So to start with, I want to use um, my base one as my lid, so I'm going to pop that to the side. But that's and then if I bring this to the bottom, you can see as we said before, you've got your base box on the side here, and you've got your lid. So I know for my lid, sorry, I want to use the black, and then for my base, I want to use use this one here so I'm going to go into my this side of my board because it's where my base starts and I'm going to go into uh, two centimeters uh, sorry it's two inches I'm working on in inches for anyone that's just joined us we do have a centimeter side on the opposite side of the board so if you prefer to work in centimeters you can so we're just doing our two centimeters all the way round and then scoring that one in. But this time what I'm going to do, I want to go into two separate lines. So I'm going to take just any mark from my board. So I'm taking my uh, number four, so we've got the four inches, and I'm just going down to that mark. And the reason I've run my score scoring tool down is because I want to do that diagonal mark. So from that line, I'm just going to score up the center and then score down onto this piece and we're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side so using that one there and onto there and then scoring there and on that side and then when we score our lines so i'm putting that to the side we're just going to crease all those lines in and that one it's and funny because you don't often think about sort of using a more paper weight for this kind of thing do you but it scores well it holds its own i'm surprised how well it holds its own shape. well actually you say that joe and i've just broken it and i've just as i was doing it i thought oh i needed to score that a bit more gentler but you can see and i'm not going to hide the fact i've actually made a little uh, cut in the car oh, okay but i'm glad it was pointed out because you can it scores it beautifully all the rest of my sides have scored lovely mm. but I, should, I was just a bit heavy-handed on that one joe would so, you for a lighter paper or would you go for a bigger ball tool or a smaller ball tool? Uh, I would go for a bigger one. A bigger ball Absolutely. tool, okay. Absolutely, that's a really good question. Absolutely go for a bigger score tool. So this one is my lid now. So I'm going to go at the side and I'm going to go in exactly the same. So we're going to do our two inch. But actually, what I am going to do, Jo, I'm just going to show how you can make your lid smaller. So I'm actually going to take an inch off of here. So I'm going to go to six inches. Take my six inches off there and the six inches off there. Just because I said you had to have all your cardstock different. You actually don't have to have it different, but what you do need to have is that centre line, that centre point has to be exactly the same. So because I've took that off, I now know that where I've done this, I now know that I have a three inch base. And on here, I have a six inch. So I need to get into the centre of here and create my three inches. So we're gonna go, so we'll be from one, two, and sorry, what, from the inch point, we've got one, two, three, but we've got two inches. So I need, no, I need to go in an inch and a half. So I'm going to go an inch and a half in all the way round there. 
And what that's going to do, that's going to create my box lid with the same amount through the middle. So we've got our one, our two and our three inches. And then that way we've got a smaller lid to actually show some of our base. So again, I'm folding away from the line that I've scored. We're just folding it round. And what it's all about is help it, is helping your cards. Oh, what am I doing there? I'm gonna just I was cutting diagonals in there. So I'm doing again like we did before, just snipping into that card, cutting them away, and then creating just that small little notch on there. So we've created a base that we don't need any cutting or gluing with, and then we're creating a lid for our box to do the uh, lid that's slightly smaller. And I'm gonna bring in my tape pen because it does create a really strong hold. You can also double over your tape as well, which will give even more strength. So it doesn't matter if you go over it, it just aids to your tape that you've already put down. I think I've talked a lot today, Joe, because my throat is very croaky, have you noticed? Or I've just laughed too much today, that's what it is. So just working each of those sides in onto the opposite side. And again, working your way round. And then our last one. And every single time you will get the absolute perfect size. And then that will fit over our little box that we've made. So just grabbing those sides in. Oh, there we go. And that will create a really cute little box. But you can see the base on that now um, at the bottom. Uh, and you've got that then exploding box on the inside, which is perfect. So that's our box, our, um, I keep wanting to call it the boxer board and it's not the boxer board. There is a boxer board, I believe, in with this bundle. There um, is. And there's so many different things that you can do with this, Joe. So let's say for instance, uh, well, we've already made a card. So let's say for instance, I'm gonna just quickly score this one. If you didn't have the ultimate prang, you just wanted to score your card blank, you could go in and I know that one increment before the six, uh, is going to make me a beautiful A5 card blank and that gives me that half fold A4 card. So let's say that we made that pop out card next. So we did that one earlier. We've got that pop up card. It's actually quite thick in its weight because we've got lots of different layers going on there. So I'm thinking we need an envelope to be able to uh, use that in. So what I'm going to do this time, we're going to bring in our Envelope Box Maker. Now this is absolutely amazing because it means you can make so many different sizes in envelopes. Now, as you go through here, it will tell you step by step of the way the envelope techniques and how you do them, whether you want to make normal envelopes or you want to make envelope box. The other great thing about it is whether you it is what you work in. If you work in millimeters, uh, it's got the size guard, size um, templates for those, uh, and it's got your different ones for how much depth you can create. So you've got flat envelopes at the top here then you've got with a 12 millimeter depth then you've got your 18 millimeter depth your 24 millimeter depth and then we go on to inches so exactly the same if you're working in inches you've got your flat envelopes and you've got your half inch depth and then you've got your uh, three quarter inch depth and your one inch depth so you just decide how much gap you want for your envelope box so i think for the card that we've got we don't need more than a half inch uh, so we're going to go work on our half inch depth now what happens on this, Jay, is you've got your, your card size grid up here, which is so clear. So if you've got in yellow, this means that you need a larger card stock than the blue and the white. So okay. simple as that. So if you've got the blue, it means that you need an A3 piece of card or a 12 by 12 piece of card. Uh, and anything that's in the white means that you can make that out of a US letter size or an A4 card size. So what we do then is we look at our grid. I'm looking at my card. Now I know it's a half fold card, so I am gonna need my uh, five and a half by eight inches. So what you will do, and I'm gonna bring in a piece of card so it just makes it a little bit easier to see. I'm looking down my eight inch here, uh, and you go all the way down to the bottom, and I'm looking at then my five inch, and I can see here that my five and a half inch by my eight inch is 11 inches. So it means I need to cut my cardstock to 11 inches. So I'm gonna bring in a piece of, so it tells me that it's, it's in the blue, 
and in the blue means that we've got we need an A3 size card. So I'm going to just grab my piece of cardstock. So we've got our big piece of A3 cardstock. I'm using Centura Pearl. We have got this on the show, which is amazing. And I know that my lines are G and M. So let's do the G and the M. Now, first of all, I need to cut it to 10, um, what do we say, 11, 11 inches. So I'm going to bring in my guillotine. I'm just bringing out my foot so I can see where the 11 inches is. I'm then going to take my card, pop that through, and we're going to measure that out. So you do need to be precise on these. So as long as your measurements are fine and you've got straight lines, that will be absolutely perfect. And then I'm going to turn that again and we're gonna pop that onto our 11 again. So we've got an 11 by 11 piece of cardstock. Now we have very, our, our viewers are like elephants, aren't they? They never forget anything, Debbie. Never forget. Which is brilliant. They never, and that is good because we need never that. Forget. Terry Lee said, did I miss Debbie making an envelope or a box for the car, the craft for along yesterday. from yesterday? Do you know what, Joe? I couldn't do it. Could you not do it? couldn't do it it what? was too big ah yes it was too big so it does fit an a4 envelope but there was no i didn't have a piece of cardstock so the a3 and the reason being i'm going to bring one in let me bring it in um let me, i haven't got my car with me joe it's actually just outside but it was terry lee that asked let me bring that in uh, so yeah, if you don't have a piece of card that's big enough then bigger than a3 what would you use is there anything out there that you can go to that's bigger than A3 that you could get hold of to make a big envelope like that? I don't know, actually. I think Sarah talked about wallpaper before, maybe, as an option. You know, like what, a sheet of wallpaper, mm. like a massive sheet of that. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah, that's mm. a brilliant idea. So, you could, so basically, if, I, if you fold this in half, my card, when I looked, fitted the centre of this card, right. which means even if you were making your envelope to fold up here, it didn't allow enough of the flap to come down to cover. Okay. So that was the reason why I couldn't seem to make an envelope. But I did see someone on social media that had made an envelope. So I'd be really interested to see how they made that. And it Let could us know. Just, just be me not being able to. So if I look down here, I'm trying to think how big is a piece of so that's 16 and a half uh, sorry 16 and a half by 11 and three quarters so so yeah see it's only seven by five eight mm. inches we don't go big enough on this you right. could probably do it joe but our grid literally goes to an eight by eight card okay and cool. an eight by eight was still too small for that particular yeah. envelope. it was a whopper wasn't it it was a big card, yes, but you can buy a A4 envelope, so you would be able to uh, just pop it into an A4 envelope. Uh, right, so going back to, uh, so sorry about that, I'm sorry I couldn't work out the measurements for that. So going back to this one, so we're going back to our 11 inches, it gives me lines G and M. Now because it's a square, so let's uh, pop this here. Now what you do is you go on this first step, Joe, and it tells you we have steps 1, 2, 3 and 4 written on there. So I'm going to pop that into there and it will line up with this piece. So I'm going to bring this down. It will line up along here. So make sure both pieces are butted up against that so they're flat. And then I'm going to use my first line, which is G. So using your G, you're going to use your tool just to go across. And you do, I do believe you get a scoring tool with this uh, as well when you get the envelope box. And then I'm going to step up because my first step is going to allow me to take it to that half an inch. Now again, you take it to this corner so we can see that. Both pieces of card will butt up against that line, but I'm going to then score on that same G line. So we're going to come down and score the G line. Now this time I'm going to turn it completely round to the opposite side and we're going to do the same line. So in that first groove at number one, we're going to score at G, take it up to the next notch, into that one so that all lines up and we're going to take that down to G again. And that creates our side, our, uh, either our side or our top panels. So then I'm going to do the same, but on this side, when I look back at my grid, 
It then tells me that I need an M. So I'm going to do the M line this time. So making sure my card is butted up against there, we're going to now go down onto the M line. And you can see that crosses over, the points cross over where my lines were. Go up that notch, uh, make sure it's butted up to the line on both sides and go down on that M. And you can see again, oh, we're crossing over. So just crossing over and then we do that on the opposite side again, finding our notch, finding that M line and just going down up the step and then on to this one and again doing our line. So you can see our envelope's really taking shape. So what we're then going to do, we're going to fold over and burnish. So it's just making sure that all those lines are creased in and burnished well. Taking them across. I mean, it couldn't be more simpler, Joe. And you do get that sort of handbook which talks you through all the different steps and how you can do them. Fabulous. Uh, very, very busy. Got loads of questions coming in again. I think after this demonstration, Deborah, we'll do another bit of a QA. and a There's lots of questions about which product in the sort of um, ultimate and score master range is going to do what so I'll put those to you after this demonstration that's all right yeah absolutely so just cutting these edges out on two of the sides because this will be the actual top of our box that you put your uh, card into or your project but on these ones we're just going to create uh, so little flaps at the side that tuck in so just snipping these ones I need to just take those ends off so you're creating two little triangles and then you've got that little that just makes the little tabs that you can then tuck in. And you can see how quickly they all come together, Joe. It doesn't take long. So snipping those out, snipping that one down and taking those two edges out. And it just gives a real nice neatness to your box. So then when we fold our box over, we've got the little tabs that fold in and then we've got our envelope that takes its shape. So I always like to put my envelope part over the top. The other thing I do like to do as well is when you've got that into place, I quite like to just make this really nice and neat. And I'm just using my noun just to make a little um, a slit, a slot there. And then I'm going to use my board to line up where I've put that and just making sure that I have so I want to make sure that I'm pretty much in line with so these edge bits I'm lining up to my score line. And then I'm going to just score a line across. Sarah just tucks those in. I like to just create that extra piece of scoring on the top. So, oh, I've done it, done it the opposite other way now, Joe. but it doesn't matter. We don't need to worry about the side pieces. So I am just going to, because I've done that score line at the top, I'm going to take those off. But it's, uh, they would normally be at the bottom. And all it does is stops any gaps. But actually, you get a perfect finish anyway at the bottom. Perfect. And then I'm going to use our red liner tape, Joe. But this time, oh, I was going to, I haven't got none. Where it is? There it is. Add some three millimeter red liner. I also want to show a little um, hack, Joe, that you can do with your um, foam tape. Foam tape? Yeah, foam tape. A little Debbie Fisher life hack. Yes, which is oh. um, which is really cool. So um, I will. Uh, well, if we've got time, I'll see what our George says, and uh, I can do it after quickly after this demo. It won't take long, but it's a it's a brilliant way to use your foam uh, tape. So just putting that on, cutting that into place. Dawn asks, is the A3 and or the A4 <laughs> Centura... <laughs> Honestly, why do I do it? What? No, I've done that. Oh, no, it's all right. It's... No, I haven't. You've I've done, done it, it the wrong right? way again. I've okay. still done it. So we've got... Never mind, we've just got a nice line there, haven't we? So I'm not <laughs> going to worry too much. Uh, Put the tape on the bottom now. Dawn was asking if all of the a... of all the Centura Pearl is double-sided. It isn't. Some is and some isn't. It's all on the website. What I'd say is that some of them are, some of them aren't. Uh, you just need to check which is which. Yeah. I guess the double-sided ones are 
great, especially for card blanks and envelopes, aren't they, Debbie, in boxes? Because you get that lovely, beautiful pearlescence inside and out, which oh, is awesome. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's just personal preference, really. Um, I don't know if, if anyone ever know the story, or if you know the story, actually, Joe, but our... Um, the Centro Repel is something we used all the time, and then um, uh, lots of people were starting to use the back of Centro Repel. And the back of Centro Repel is the same as our white stamping card. Is it? And that's where the white stamping card come into play. Oh, so okay. because people we thought, well, it's silly to use your beautiful Centro cardstock for your to use the back of it. So we might as well bring in the own. And that's how you get. So you wouldn't normally have that little no notch there, but actually that will help it to tuck in, wouldn't it? It would tuck in. But it means that all your projects, Joe, then will fit perfectly into your actual. Um, envelope and you've got that beautiful Invella box which just looks amazing. Tuck that in. Awesome. I've got loads of questions I'm going to pop to you in a second, Debbie, uh, about all our... <laughs> so we don't get any incidents. Um, Mary would like to know, please show how or what the box set is for. Do we need it if we have the scoreboard and the Invella box? Uh, so the box board. The boxer, yes. Let me find the boxer board. I've got one over here if you want one, I think. Uh, so uh, the boxer bowl pretty much works in a similar way, Joe. Okay. So it does still works on a boxer bowl, but what it's what this one is specifically made for. So your uh, let me bring in my ultimate pro. If you uh, take out or go anywhere or pop around your friends or you go to craft classes when we're eventually allowed to do all those sort of things, uh, your uh, you would take your score master to find that you will take your score master out with you uh, but the actual board here will actually stay inside so it will clip in nicely into your ultimate so it was actually specifically made to go with the ultimate pro and it's an extra add-on because on the inside of our ultimate pro when i open that up you'll see that you've also got a scoreboard here joe okay you can only make specific sizes okay. so you wouldn't be able to do because uh, you've got little lines in here so you've got these in half centimeters as half inches where on your actual scoreboard here your uh, boxer board uh, you've also got your um, lines for your centimetres and your inches on each side. So they are pretty much the same board, but you would use them in different ways. This one you would just use on the go, you'd use quickly. This one you would use with your Ultimate Pro. So awesome. Hopefully that answers the Hope that helps. Uh, Roxanne wants to know what's the difference between the score master and the top score? Uh, the score master. Oh, the top score. Right, so let me bring that in. So your top score, if you have got a ultimate, you wouldn't need because your top score is a smaller version of what's on the ultimate. So again, this is one that would travel with you. So you could take it. So if you are going somewhere, but you don't want to take a full ultimate with you, you would then just pick up your scoreboard and this will do the same thing. So let's grab myself a piece of card. It will do exactly the same thing. You've got your half fold, your square, your half fold A4, your tri-fold. Um, so again, if you're putting any line up to here, you then just look and see, so my half fold, uh, line so we could create that uh, then it tells me that I can make my um, Constantina card so we can do our line in there so it's one of those scoreboards that will give you all your the benefits of having an ultimate but on the go uh, so you've got all those different score lines that you can put in there and create your half fold cards your trifling card folds um, yeah all your different ones that you want there and just to be able to create them using that scoreboard so this is really if you haven't got the ultimate or you just want to keep it in your craft bag wherever you go brilliant uh, Alison says what size paper would we need to make an envelope for an 8x8 card 8x8 card so that was on here Joe. so if you're just making a flat envelope what we would do is go to our flat size guards um, sizing we would go from 8 inches to 8 inches along the side and then you would follow that line down and you'd need an 11 by 5 eighths of an inch. Um, 11. 11 and 5 eighths of an inch. 11 and 5 eighths square. Square. Wonderful. Yes, sorry, Thank yes. you. So, yeah. um, CJ wants to know what's the largest envelope that can be made with the Envelo Box Creator. So that pretty much, oh, with the Envelo Creator. So Envelo Box one? Creator. 
In Vela box, yes, so that's this one. Um, so the largest one you can make, it would be an 8x8 card. It's an 8x8, yes, brilliant, eight thank you. Yes. Uh, and that's it, keep getting your questions in to me. I'm going to go through some of the extra boards that we have available to you as well right now. It is the Enveloper Pro is what we're going to look at first. Uh, it's UK only at the moment, but this is going to be, of course, for, great for making all of those envelopes. Where did the Pro sit then? Uh, with the because we had the original enveloper, didn't we, Debbie? Mm -hmm. But then the pro, what difference does the pro make to the original one? Uh, so this that is the original one, Joe. Oh, the enveloper so, pro is the original, yes, is it? That's awesome. the original one. So this all you could create when the first one came out uh, was basic envelopes. So okay. you couldn't make uh, envelope boxes. Envelope box was delivered, um, developed after uh, the enveloper pro because this is the one that made the envelopes. This is the one that was made out of MDF. Uh, and then awesome. when uh, the company got uh, bigger... First ever so, product? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. This was the first ever product, apart from it was MDF, and then they made it into the plastic ones, so um, much more durable, so which is good. But yeah, Brilliant. great one, that one, if you just want to make your basic envelopes. Awesome. And then we've also got the top score, Debbie. Uh, so we just mentioned this, didn't we? But just to recap, what are we going to do with the top score? Uh, so, yep, the top score is the one that we just uh, shown, and that's the... I'm getting all my boards mixed up here. Look, I bet it's Don't you me. worry. Yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, the top score is exactly what it is, Joe. It's the, it's the one that uh, does all your card sizes. So it's the top of what's on the Envella, the Ultimate Pro. But if you haven't got the Ultimate Pro, it's just a board you can use. It's a great one to keep in your craft bag does because it has all those different uh, sizes in there for your Does it cards. sit over your score master? Does it sit on your score master? Would it sit on well, it, I don't know, it just looks it yeah, looks it a similar size could. to me. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it well, sits it on could there. Sit on there if yeah. you wanted it to. Yeah, it would actually sit on there. So brilliant. It move. Yeah, mm -hmm. love that. And then we've got some embossing boards for you as well. So the next one, oh, fancy, festive fancy, this one just here. Uh, and again, absolutely awesome. Going to clip into your Ultimate. Uh, you're going to really love doing that. Uh, it's less expensive in the US than it is in the UK, which doesn't often happen. So uh, snap that up, US guys. Um, the next one I've got is the Boutique Boxes. Now, this is going to make two very awesome but different boxes, Debbie, this one. right? That's like a handbag, isn't it, that one? It is, yeah, they are. That's exactly that what they are, Joe. They're um, they're bag dies that you can make. They look amazing. They do. They really, really do. So we've got that one. We've also got uh, special treats, which I love. It makes this kind of popcorn box style, which is awesome. All of these are double sided as well, so you're getting two boards in one here, which is absolutely awesome. And uh, oh no, is that the popcorn one? No, this one's the popcorny one. The sweet treats, which is that one there. Sweet things, sorry. And you can see there, that that's exactly what you're getting in there. The ability to make two awesome boxes. Uh, there you are. So uh, that one's sweet thing. See where? Right. Uh, any more questions? Please get them in before the show. Have you got anything for demo of the show, Debbie? Have we made anything finished that you want to pop in? Or it's all been quite technique, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's been more techniques. Yeah. Yes, more techniques. So. Okay. Um, Right, so I'm going to just show you the board. I've got one of the sweet treats balls. It's the sweet things. This is a great one because this has the carton boxes on that you can actually just bring it down there and you'll be able to see. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry to the director. So we've got our uh, board here and you've got all these different things that you've got on there. If I turn it around, I love this one and I'm going to do this one, Joe, because it's a great fun one to have, a really good one for the kids. So I'm just going to place this. Now it does work, so if you have got your ultimate pro you can work it on your actual ultimate pro by slotting it into those gaps it just keeps it nice and sturdy i'm then going to place my cardstock on the top and sort of follow um, so i'm going to bring in my smallest ball tool and then i'm just going to follow uh, those ridges around so you can sort of feel them so you can sort of you know, feel where they go. So that's come to a stop there. So you can sort of guess where it's going to go. But I would just lift your page up and see where that takes you because then you'll just get it better of where, where you actually want to go to. So I know we've got a tag going on there. That's then turning the corner there. And the more you use the boxes, the more you will see where they, um, you, you'll get to grips with sort of where and how they feel. So we're just popping. So I'm just 
do it in my own thing there, Joe. We're not finding the groove. There we go. I need to. You've got to do a Madonna and get, get into in the groove. The groove. <laughs> and what I need to do is just take my time rather than uh, rushing. And if you just do little strokes, I'm finding then you can find them a lot easier. So just doing that one across. But I do like to just keep lifting it because then you know exactly uh, where you should be going. So this is taking me into an, another direction here. But what they're great fun for is um, the kids would love doing these. There's something you could do with the grandchildren. Uh, just finding that the grooves on there again, bringing that across. And that's given, as you can see, it's starting to give us that shape. I can see I've got a notch there, so I'm going to bring that down. And then also we've got some sort of curved lines. So I'm just going to follow those curved lines around each step of the way. There we go. And then they will follow on there. So yeah, you're starting to see that what we've actually got is a popcorn container. So how cool will that be when... Um, when the kids uh, are sitting watching a movie or you want to uh, make their Absolutely own little brilliant. popcorn boxes. And then all you need to do with that, Joe, is you just cut them out. So really nice and simple to cut out. I'm just doing it really quickly. I do have two that are already done. Uh, whilst you're doing that, Julie's got a question for you, Debbie. Yes. She says, Debbie, what does acid have to do with in crafting? I see a lot of craft items that are marked acid free. Why is this important? So um, I think it's more just to do with uh, product that's put into it and what people are sensitive to. Okay. Um, a lot of things are combined with acid, Joe, because it just helps them uh, adhere. But you can get a lot, the glues have come a long way now uh, where you don't have to have them, but more to do with anything else. It's just your sensitivity uh, okay. to what's in the glue. Same with silicon as well, because uh, people don't like silicon in a lot of things, uh, not only because of the smell, but because it's. Um, uh, it's, it's if you touch it, you can just be can be like a bit of an irritant for some people, yeah, absolutely. But the other thing I with have that effect is, as well on some people, you know, <laughs> a bit of an irritant. <laughs> the other thing is, Joe, is um, uh, acid can also uh, erode, so we don't want it on shiny surfaces. You definitely right. don't you always want acid free if you're attaching photographs to anything, okay, um, because they would just erode your photo photographs. Uh, right, so if I just bring in my two pieces here, so what you need to do is on one of the pieces you keep with this bottom piece on and then on another piece you actually chop that off there because you only need one bottom, or on bottoms again look. So oh this time once you've had two, so you can see we've got this one uh, and not on the bottom piece here and we're just going to add our glue. Now because I'm using um, uh, Centura Pearl, I don't want to use my Call out all purpose. What we do want to use is our tacky glue. So, what I am going to do is apply it to both pieces to start with. So, the first one we're going to just pop our, our tacky glue along the side, and then I'm going to use it on this side as well because then it will attach itself to the opposite side. Now, the reason I'm doing both at the same time is because it will give it time to evaporate a little bit and make it sticky. And then what I'm going to do is just turn these upside down so I can attach this piece to the opposite side. And that will marry up perfectly. Just hold that in place. And I would say just leave it for a little bit longer for the tacky glue just to be a bit more tackier. Then we're going to bring this one round and actually tuck that under and that will, if I've cut it right, that will work perfectly. But my other side I've just felt has popped, popped off Joe. So I'm just going to hold that one into place and then re-stick this one into place. And it is just a case of letting that evaporate a little bit just to make it a little bit more tacky. Did I just hear right that someone said four minutes? I thought How we many? Had I well, we about... yeah, it's about three minutes left, Debbie. Oh, no. I How thought... long did you think we had? I thought we had about 20 minutes. Mm. No, you why can stay for 20 minutes that? if you want, but I'm going for my lunch in I three minutes. I don't know why I thought that. McDonald's has just turned up outside. <gasps> I know. Oh, McDonald's. And I've got a Greek salad. Today. I'm going to sit and weep and watch them eat it. <laughs> 
And then we're just gonna, I won't stick that, Joe, because I want to show something else quick, but look how that bottom fits perfectly in there. And then you've got your really gorgeous little popcorn box and you can just decorate that. But I want to show you something really quickly, Joe. a little hack. Um, do you know when you mat and layer your mats and you have your foam tape because you want to have a yeah. little bit off the ground, but they're quite unsightly, aren't they? I always think how yeah. unsightly they are. Use your markers, so your classic markers, and just go down the side of them. Great idea. And then what you can do is you've got hidden you've coloured them then. tape. Yeah, hidden Love foam tape. Love that. So a nice, really quick, simple demo, but that's a great one of using those reels of uh, tape. So uh, yeah, amazing. There you go. It was quick. It was a really quick demo, but it's a great one to use. And I love that one because I use it a lot where you're doing that matte and layering mm. and then you can't see what you've put underneath. Uh, loads of people, loads of love for this uh, show, Debbie. Lots of people in the uh, comments absolutely have adored it. And I hope it really clears up what all the glues are and how you use them. Uh, you remember you can watch this back at any time you like as well. Might always be worth just making a note of the time and date of this show if you think it is going to be something you want to watch back. Because then when you go over to our website, you'll be able to then go back and find it much more easily. Uh, it's been a very fun show, Debbie, as well as very, very <laughs> informative. Now, we have got another show together, haven't we, in just over an hour's time. Mm. So do you fancy sharing with us what's, uh, what's coming up in that one? Yeah, we've got some great products, and I'm getting my hands on the gorgeous illustrators, which is amazing. They're just, they are the, the Swiss watch of the, um, yeah, of the spectrum. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be using those. We've got the beautiful rotational stamps. We've got loads coming up, Joe, so mm. it's going to be a, a fun back couple of hours still. Yeah, lots of great little starter kits on there that aren't going to break the bank as well. So if you fancy having a little bit of a dibble-dabble and trying something new, then I'd say definitely that is going to be the show for you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the show. It's been absolutely awesome. Uh, Debbie, thank you. It's been a pleasure as always. Uh, we will see you back here in exactly one hour's time. So go do what you need to do. Grab some lunch, get some breakfast, depending on uh, where you are. But make sure you join myself here back with Debbie in an hour for Second Chance Sunday. See you then.